Hey guys, how's it going? So in the last tutorial, I showed you guys how to perform an STF calculation using BURI, which is a GUI of Quantum Espresso. And in this tutorial, what I'm going to show you guys is how to choose a particular value for the kinetic energy cutoff for the wave function, as well as the charge density and even the, you know, kinetic, I'm um, sorry, and even the K point grid. So, I mean, if you have been, you know, working with Quantum Espresso or you are just a beginner, then you must have, you know, have had this doubt like how are you going to ever choose what value you want for your system for these three settings now the answer to that is that you basically converge these values with respect to energies so um, and one very important thing to keep in mind is that all these values basically depend on your pseudo potential so the first thing should be to know what kind of pseudo potential you are using so currently I'm using an ultra soft zero potential of the exchange correlational type PBE and the suggested cutoff for this wave um, this zero potential is 43 bucks for the wave function as well as 225 rate bucks for the charge density. However, we are even, you know, in this tutorial, we are going to test whether these are correct or what should be the values that we should use. So coming back to the tutorial. So what we will do is we will calculate the energies of our system for a bunch of uh, you know um, cutoff values for the wave function and then we will try to see how the energies are changing and let's do that so f let's first calculate the total energy at 25 rate books and another thing to know is that there are two types of zero potentials right so you have you know an ultra soft zero potential which is this or you have you know usual norm conserving zero potential now for the norm conserving zero potential it is a good idea to you know just you can like skip this part that is the cutoff energy for the charge density you can skip this part so the default value is basically four times that of the cutoff for the wave function so quantum espresso would take that by itself however if you're using an ultra soft zero potential then what you need is you need to provide a higher you know cutoff for charge density so usually it is recommended to provide a cutoff that is like 8 to 12 times the cutoff for the wave function and since the default value is just the four times that of the wave function so for ultra soft zero potential you will need to enter that manually so since currently we are performing or you know providing a 25 rate per cutoff for the wave function so let's just you know provide it 10 time value that is uh, 250 rate bucks for the cutoff for charge now if you head over to the input file then you will notice that all these changes have been reflected here so here you can see that we have these two now let's you know without any wasting any time let's go ahead and run the calculation okay so in the result tab we will you know see how the calculations are running and let's just wait for it okay so now we have the you know graph so you can just you know keep on hitting reload to see how many iterations have been performed okay so i mean it has already converged i am clicking on reload because i'm thinking like it hasn't converged yet but okay so the calculations have converged and we have found the energy to be this now what you need to do is you need to just go ahead and note that down that is minus 81.74881792 now quickly just head over back here and then change it to 30 red bugs real quickly and then accordingly change it to 10 times of that that is 300 red bugs and then run the calculation again and then just wait for the results okay so we have the graph starting to plot now now just go ahead and click on reload to see how many iterations have been performed okay the SCF calculation is converged now and we have the total energy so just go ahead and note that down once again minus 81.7530684 then go back and change it to now 35 so now as you can see that we are you know observing a huge or you know significantly larger differences in energy so currently we have the accuracy at like 0.1 so currently the energy is being calculated are correct up to like one decimal places so um, it will depend on you like how uh, accurate a calculation you want so currently what we'll be doing is we'll be looking for 
uh, change that is less than three decimal places. So currently what we want is we want to keep uh, or provide a large enough cutoff for the wave function kinetic energy so that the uh, change in energy is not more than like three decimal places. So okay now note that this value down once again minus 81.7 five four six three four zero six and the reason i'm creating this tutorial is i mean i've seen a lot of uh, beginners working in quantum espresso and even i was one and i spent a lot of time finding all these things out and then there were some tutorials on youtube a huge shout out to those guys but most of those tutorials were in some foreign language or they were not you know really talking in the, those and it was really hard to understand and then i had to search all over the place for the you know in the forum for quantum express and it took up a lot of time so i am creating this tutorial so that uh, you know you guys don't waste a lot of time in your research now let's run another iteration for 440 grid bugs for the charge density and the wave function respectively I mean click on run or did I you know note this value down I did okay I did and then run this again okay so now what you can notice is that the energies have started to converge a little so now we are seeing a change that is you know taking place after the third decimal place so currently we our energies are not changing by more than two decimal places so now and another thing to know is that as you increase the cutoff for the wave function then the calculation time is going to increase significantly so the higher is the cutoff higher is the accuracy of your calculation but then higher is the computational time so that is why you know it is uh, recommended to find a good balance between accuracy and the computational time or the computational cost so that is why for you know most of the research it is you know good enough to have a convergence of like three decimal places in your energies so now this value is converged so just go ahead and note this down minus 81.755 to 108 all right now there is still a change of like 0 0.001 so keep on increasing it because we are looking for a convergent value of like five decimal places so we'll just keep on increasing the cutoff kind of energy for the wave function until we reach that threshold so now you can notice that the calculation time is increasing because earlier calculations were running way faster than this and this one is like super slow like we have already reached two iterations in this time and earlier like in 25 read books we were like you know done by now so now we are at only three iterations and earlier when i used to click on reload like three iterations were done like this swiftly okay finally so we have the new values and i guess i'm seeing some convergence or not okay so this time the energies you know have changed significantly oh seven two eight okay so i'm sorry okay now let's increase it now if you remember then the suggested cutoff for this wave from um, this uh, pseudo potential was 43 read bugs so i guess we have probably reached the suggested cutoff or the convergent value so let's you know provide a smaller increase this time like 47 red bugs and see how the um the uh, change in the energy takes place so just wait for it to run okay so now we have the file now for silicon atoms or the silicon crystal system this process is still you know working really fast because the number of electrons is really low however for a larger system you know it is going to take up a lot of your time because so it is you know recommended to have all this process written in a script so usually if you're running your job on a large cluster or some uh, you know something then what you have is you have a job scheduler so you can you know write all these jobs and as you can see now we have achieved an accuracy of like three decimal places in this step because our energies have only changed by 
and you know our energies are same up to like four decimal places and by the way this is 47 so we are seeing a convergence in the energies now let's just change it to 50 and run just one more last calculation so this time we'll be running it for 50 red bugs um, 50 and then just wait for the calculation to complete okay so finally we have uh, you know converge the values and then just go ahead and note down this energy minus 81.75604816 now just go ahead and copy all these values and try to plot a graph so just select all these and plot the graph I should have probably you know, chosen a scatter plot for this okay so now as you can see that uh, your SCF values finally start to converge from like somewhere between 45 or something however we are still going a little further down so I mean you know you can call you know 45 read books as your converged value because as you can see that after 45 read books and 47 read books the energy wasn't changing up till like four decimal places however as you can see that when you went to 50 read books and you saw the energy change a little significantly however I won't call this change uh, you know very significant because it is changing from like 7559 to 7560 which is again a very small change so i mean you could call 45 red books as the conversion energy however it all you know comes down to whatever you want like how accurate a calculation you want i have seen some people recommending a 60 red book uh, you know uh, cut off wave function energy however i'm not sure if that was for this particular pseudo potential or not so currently we have like a pretty good accuracy of i mean you could just subtract these two numbers 0 0.7559818 minus 0 0.7560 4816 so as you can see that you have an accuracy of like four decimal places here so you can see that the energy difference is pretty small that is it is um, basically the same up to like four decimal places so you could call 45 red books as the converged or the suggested cutoff for the wave function so that is how you know you select the um, cutoff for your wave function kinetic energy and and since this video is getting pretty long i'll cover how to you know converge these values in a later tutorial however the procedure basically is just the same that is you find out the energy for like one by one grade then two by two grade then two by and um, three by three by three grade then four by four by four grade and so on until you know your total energy converges so the procedure basically remains the same this video is getting pretty long that's it thanks for watching i hope you guys you know enjoy this video and learn something from it and it helped you out in some way if you're struggling with the software and that's it thanks for watching have a great day and don't forget to hit the like button if you like this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this